Michael? Yes, here we are. Good afternoon. Um, again, now we're having 10 lightning talks of 10 minutes. There's no time for Q&A. Uh, first, I have an announcement or a thing to tell you um, or to put your attention to. There's a walking tour of Torino, which happens today at 5.30 till 6.30. It's part of the wellness track. Meeting point is Piazza Castello. You can all find the details on the website. So our first uh, 10 minutes lighting talk, we welcome Tina Reis. Tina is a CEO consultant web developer from Berlin, Germany. Eight years ago, more or less by coincidence, they started developing the Word uh, with WordPress and then the love for WordPress began. Tina owns her own business, developing websites with a strong focus on accessibility, sustainability. They help, help organizations increase their online visibility with SEO. Well, we just heard about relaunch, and relaunch can result in a complete disaster, CO-wise. We heard about that. So Tina will show us how to relaunch without ruining SEO. Tina, go. A big applause for Tina. Thank you. OK, okay. then uh, let's jump right in and talk about how to relaunch a website without ruining SEO. First, about me. Uh, my name is Tina Reis. I'm an SEO consultant and WordPress developer based in Berlin, Germany. I started out eight years ago doing SEO, so that is my background. But then I ventured more and more into the technical side of things, and now I'm also a WordPress developer with a focus on accessibility and, of course, SEO. And because I have these two perspectives as a WordPress developer and an SEO person. When I hear the word relaunch, there's really two hearts beating inside my chest. As a developer, I get excited. I'm like, yes, let's do this. Let's make it new. Let's make it fresh. Um, but as an SEO person, when I hear the word relaunch, I'm more like, uh. <laughs> Why? Well, relaunches can lead to massive traffic losses, and that's why every SEO person I know is super nervous. This is just one example of a website that lost over 90% of its traffic because of a relaunch gone wrong. And let me tell you, as a freelancer, I'm not looking forward to receiving that phone call. But why is that? Well, yeah, I've given it away. Uh, why is that? Um, well, the reason is that Google is just really conservative. It does not like change. It is actually known to freak out at the tiniest changes. And when you really think about it, like how the Google algorithm, wor algorithm works, it does make sense. Because one thing that relaunches do is they change URLs very often. And with those URLs, historic ranking data is lost. Um, Google attaches everything it knows about a page, ranking data, backlinks, user signals to the URL. When that URL changes, even if everything else on the site stays the, on the page stays the same, um, it is still treated as a completely new page in Google's eyes and will have to start from scratch. Then the other thing that relaunches do, of course, is they change content and structure. So when you have a page that is high performing in SEO, gets a lot of traffic, you do some small changes like update some content or add some content, that is actually really positive because it signals to search engines that you keep your uh, website up to date. But when you change a lot of things and all at once, then Google is more like, OK, this looks very different now. How do we know that our users will like it as much as before? And so what can happen is that you um, get bumped down in the rankings until Google gathers more data. So before you panic now, if you know that you have a relaunch coming up, um, I will in this talk walk you through some very practical steps on how you can do a relaunch and keep your rankings. 
First, let's talk about what you can do before, so in preparation to the relaunch. The first thing that you should do is understand your current rankings. For that, you use an SEO tool of your choice. If you need to use a free one, I recommend a Google Search Console. This will give you um, your traffic driving pages. You can identify the pages with the best rankings and pages with backlinks. That gives you a better picture of what you actually need to protect and what pages you really need to watch out for. Then the second step is to know all your current URLs. And let me tell you, all websites have a lot of stuff hidden somewhere. Um, for that, you use a crawling tool. I personally use a tool with the funky name Screaming Frog. Um, a crawling tool um, follows all the links on your website and gives you a list of all of the URLs it encounters with some extra information that is really helpful, like H1, title tag, meta description, etc. This will be the basis for planning all your unavoidable URL changes and redirects, and it also just gives you a better understanding of the website. So now you really get to work, and you develop the new website with SEO in mind. And the first thing I want to say about this is Try to avoid URL changes. Now, you might think, what about redirects? Can't I just redirect the old URL to the new URL? Google will find that, and it'll be all fine. Well, yes and no. If you do a 301 redirect, 301 is the server response that says that the old content is now permanently at a new location, and Google will usually transfer ranking data from the old to the new URL. That is really your best shot if you can't avoid a URL change. But you have to keep in mind that this is no guarantee. So Google is a bit unpredictable. It might transfer ranking data. It might not, especially if a lot of things change on your website. It is just not good to just rely on this. So I still say avoid URL changes. Then. Try to keep traffic driving topics and pages on your site. So you've identified this in the first step. Um, don't just get rid of um, traffic driving pages if you don't have to. Then those pages that are driving a lot of SEO traffic, make sure that the content of those URLs stays roughly the same. So still the same, they rank for a set of keywords and make sure that the search intent of those keywords, what people are coming to this page to find, is still there after the relaunch, even if it looks different. Then another thing, um, keep important pages in the navigation. If a high-performing uh, URL was linked in the navigation before the relaunch, it should also be afterwards. And we know um, and have this confirmed now by recently leaked Google algorithm documents, um, that Google gives weight to what is linked in the navigation. And one very important thing, don't spread content across different URLs if it was on one URL before. This can lead to a phenomenon that SEO people have called a keyword cannibalization. Why, I can't tell you. Um, but basically what this means is that um, you have multiple pages on your site that are competing for the same keywords. And instead of picking one and ranking that one high, Google does not pick. Instead, all your uh, URLs will suffer in the ranking. So try to avoid that. Don't forget to migrate your meta tags. Uh, so that's title and description. Especially the title is really important for SEO, and it is often forgotten when you do a migration. And map out redirects in advance. Don't just do it in a rush while you're doing the relaunch. Be prepared, use your crawling tool, um, make a spreadsheet, old URL goes to this new URL, and have that prepared. So now you're ready to launch. What can you do during and after? First thing, 
make sure your new site is indexable. Indexable means Google can find it and is allowed to list it. Well, now I'm going to talk about this little checkbox that's hidden in the Google set uh, in the WordPress settings. That looks like this. <laughs> Um, I've actually had a couple of clients that have called me and said, our website is not on Google at all. What can we do? And I found that it's really easy because this checkbox was ticked. Um, now, <laughs> and really it's happened more than once. Um, now, a lot of, lot of developers um, check this box while they are working on a site because they don't want their staging environment or their dev site to be indexed, of course. But then, when the relaunch happens, everything is hectic, they forget to take it out. So, really make sure you don't <laughs> forget this. Um, then, uh, run through a couple of after-launch checks. The first is apply and test your redirects. And with an emphasis on test, really make sure that they are working as intended and they are not, I don't know, accidentally creating a redirect chain where the HTTP redirects to the HTTPS and that redirects to something else. Just make sure that they are working and clean. Then use your crawling tool one more time to crawl for errors and fix the errors. Um, submit the new sitemap to Google Search Console. Um, that is not entirely necessary, um, but it just helps Google find uh, your changes faster. Then uh, fix any internal links to 301 pages. So if you've done any redirects and um, some internal links on your website are still pointing to the old URLs, go through them and fix them. Your crawling tool will give you a handy list of all of the URLs where this is the case. Then, now is the part that's the hardest. You have to sit tight and monitor traffic and error messages for about three to four weeks. Because that is how long it might take Google to notice and process uh, your changes. And only after a couple of weeks have gone by, you can really judge whether or not your relaunch was successful from an SEO perspective. So, then, <laughs> The last thing that I want to leave you with is that uh, even if you do everything right, any relaunch is a risk. Um, because there are some, thing that, some things that are just out of your control. Google is a bit unpredictable, um, and it might be you've changed really a lot on your site. It gets bumped down in the rankings, at least temporarily, and you have some losses. It is really good to talk to your stakeholders, like your client, your colleagues, and warn them that this might happen and that it's not your fault. Um, but in the end, um, a relaunch is also always a chance for a website's SEO traffic to grow long term because you've improved user experience, because you made it load faster, all of these things that Google likes. Um, so, yeah, um, I hope that you've gotten some practical tips away from this, um, and I wish you good luck for your uh, next relaunch, and do find me later and tell me your relaunch stories, I'd love to hear them, and uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Tina.